Hello, my name is Neil and this is the third episode of the Splunky PSP development series where I rewrite a game called Splunky Classic in modern C++ using technologies such as OpenGL and CMake. Watch the first episode to get to know how I start the project to support multiple platforms from a single codebase and the second episode to get to know how I implemented the main dude using the state pattern. This episode features a new natively supported platform which is Android, adding sounds and music to the game and implementing collectibles such as gold bars and diamonds. In the that being said, let's grab the PSP. I'll use a jack-to-jack -jack cable to record gameplay audio instead of a microphone. And as you will notice in a few moments, the application startup time has increased dramatically. This is because the sounds and music are bundled within the executable just as the textures, meaning that everything has to be loaded on startup. I'll get back into it later into the video. In just a few moments we'll be met with the classical Splunky theme. And now jumping sounds. The whip sounds. And as we enter the game, the entering level sounds. You can see the collectibles, single gold bar, triple gold bar and diamonds. Coin sound right now. And you can see difference in dollars being printed in the HUD. Ladder sounds. There are some items like this jar, or this rock, or this chest, or the other chest that I added, but they are not very interactive right now, but they will be just like in the original game. Now let's take a very big jump. This is main dude stunned state. It takes some time, some cooldown before it gets back into a normal state and one heart is being removed and we'll enter the level summary screen. The level summary screen has expanded, now it prints the time that was progressed and the loot collected. Again, a very big jump. From what I see, the random number generator that I am using on PSP is broken, meaning that the levels are still random, but they are in the same order always, uh, meaning that Firstly, I need to fix this, and secondly, well, you can see the same levels uh, in each devlog, which I think it's cool because you can see the same level but with more details as the development progresses. Uh, the music theme is different uh, between main menu and playing screen. And we'll take the last, this time lethal jump to enter main dude dead state and then scores screen. 3, 2, 1 and go! As I said, now the build will be the scores screen. Uh, the scores screen is the place where I'll print the overall statistics of the game. Uh, right now it's filled with placeholders as I'll need to implement the file system support uh, and some abstractions for it. You can enter score screen also from main menu, you don't have to kill yourself. And last thing, the pause overlay. It's not very practical in the main menu, but once you enter the game level it will reveal additional option, which is to kill yourself. This way you can enter main menu and start the game once again. Unlike what some people think, Android development isn't reserved only for Java and you do can run natively compiled code. And yes, the official way of distributing Android applications is through the APK file and each APK file must contain an Android activity instance that would be an entry point for the application. But what you can do is to compile your native application into a shared library artifact instead of an executable, bundle that shared library artifact and from within the Android activity do a call through JNI, which stands for Java Native Interface, 
and run your native main function from Java. So I started adjusting the build system for a new platform. Upon detecting Android NDK, it compiles a shared library and in any other case from the same list of sources, it compiles an executable. Simic is easily extendable in that regard. To create an APK file, I utilized scripts from swiki slash simple SDL repository. What they do is calling Gradle, which builds the Java activity shipped by SDL as the entry point for the application and calls CMake to build the native artifact. In fact, it calls CMake twice as I am building a multi-lib APK, meaning that both 32 and 64-bit ARM artifacts are built and bundled to support both of the architectures. Then the native artifacts are bundled into the APK and the build process is done. Although I have a Google Play developer account, I don't sign the artifacts right now and don't even think about putting it on Google Play as I still find this platform to be an experiment. Upon running the application, Java Virtual Machine starts the activity, which then in turn retrieves a pointer to main function from bundled Spelunky PSP shared library through JNI and executes it. When returned from the main function, application is disposed. Now, as I said, this is an experiment and I didn't even create on-screen controls, so some form of physical input is required. For that, I utilized USB on the go with a USB keyboard connected. This isn't an ideal setup, as in some cases I can't press more than two keys at once, for example, when I'm trying to run fast and jump, uh, I am activating some system health key for changing keyboard layout. The other thing that I don't consider finished on this platform is audio support. For some reason, I failed to cross-compile SDL Mixer for Android, but as this isn't of much priority, I didn't try harder, resulting in no sounds and music being present. As for the performance, well, this phone has somewhere around 7 years, has a 32-bit ARM processor, which you can't find nowhere in devices sold nowadays, but it works perfectly well. When implementing the audio module, I face the very same problems as when implementing the video module. In case of the video module, I want to abstract an interface for creating a window, creating an OpenGL context, swapping window buffers, pulling current aspect ratio, and so on. Because when developing a multi-platform application, you don't want to mix some specific API, some specific library with your code base. An example, if you wanted to create a window and you wanted to do it in a multi-platform way, you'd create some abstraction, for example, through a window class and in its implementation file, conditionally, depending on targeted platform, you'd use WGL in case of Windows, X11 in case of Linux, EGL in case of Android, EAGL in case of iOS, and so on. Now, realistically speaking, you wouldn't use either of those because you would use some library that would abstract it for you, like SDL or GLFW. Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't use an abstraction layer between SDL and your code base, because at some point you may still encounter some very exotic platform that doesn't ship SDL implementation. Um, and you would have to utilize some platform-specific library yourself. So I created an abstraction for audio as a audio class, and currently Every supported platform utilizes SDL Mixer as a backend as the actual technology used to play sounds and music. So the only thing left was to actually ship the files that are meant to be played. If you watched the first episode, you may already know that I developed a small utility tool called Resource Compiler. What Resource Compiler does is it takes a binary file on input and it outputs a header file, defining a char array with each byte of the past input file. By including those input files, I become independent from the targeted platform file system API. So that's cool. I utilized the resource compiler, I resource compiled all the audio files and that made a problem because the output binary grew from 5 megabytes to 16 megabytes. Um, for some context, PSP has at least 32 megabytes of RAM. Uh, I say at least 32 because they upgraded the number in their later models, but out of those 
32 megabytes, 8 megabytes are reserved for kernel, and as I said, 16 megabytes is the binary size, so that leaves um, around 8 megabytes for any runtime allocations. Uh, frankly speaking, this is enough, uh, this is more than enough to be honest, uh, but still it makes the binary start, uh, the executable start, much longer and it doesn't leave much room for any future assets, so it's better to actually shrink those audio files. Um, now, the most obvious way to shrink those audio files was to downsample them. Right now they are 44 kilohertz, uh, 44, yeah, 44 kilohertz, and because they are chip tune, uh, because they are stylized to be this 8 bit music, uh, I could downsample them to around 11 kilohertz and still don't notice any uh, quality loss. Um, so I did it. But the problem is, uh, the SDL mixer implementation for the PSP doesn't accept any other sampling rate than 44 kilohertz. Uh, so at that moment, I decided. I'll leave it as it is and just face the consequences later when I'll want to add some more assets. Um, but I do have some ideas, some two ideas to uh, solve this problem. First is to directly access the library, the PSP specific library that is utilized underneath uh, SDL Mixer for PSP. Uh, because most probably the problem is self-contained within SDL Mixer, not within the library that it utilizes underneath, and it should allow me for some uh, smaller sampling rate. Uh, but the problem is I didn't use this library before, and just by ignorance I may introduce some new bugs, some stability issues into the Splunky PSP. So uh, that leaves the second uh, idea, and the second idea is to actually still use the SDL mixer, but to create an um, intermediate buffer uh, allocated in runtime in which I would upsample uh, the sound or music and then pass it to SDL mixer, so to cheat it that it has uh, actually 44 kilohertz sound or music while uh, it was mm, 11 kilohertz when resource compiled. Um, yeah, and uh, it would be a little bit more memory consuming than the first idea, but the good side is that I wouldn't have to um, use the platform specific implementation in case of PSP. I've got plenty of ideas for the upcoming 0.4 version of Splunky PSP, uh, which I'm sure it will be the very first actually playable version of the game, with the first NPCs being implemented, like bats, like snakes, cavemen, damsels, uh, with arrow traps, maybe even with a shopkeeper implementation, uh, with main dude being able to pick up things and throw them, uh, those items that you have already seen, like jars, like rocks, uh, like chests, and also with new ones like capes, jetpacks, pistols, shotguns, gloves, uh, with a particle system for fire and blood particles. And when it comes to bug fixes, I definitely need to fix that random number generator and shrink those audio files to make some space for any future assets. When it comes to newly supported platforms, I would like to add support for the Pocket Go devices. Now, I'm not sure if I'm not overly ambitious about this, because Pocket Go devices don't even have a GPU, so I would have to utilize a software implementation of OpenGL. But this isn't a graphically intensive title, uh, it's rendering a few quads after all, uh, so I'm being optimistic. That being said, thanks for watching.